Greetings all pyroclastic creatives. I'm on a PC today, sorry about that. Regardless, let's pop this rock. Now once again, you're gonna need a volcano. You can download this one from the Patreon, or you can make your own one with a bunch of tutorials on my channel. And then we're gonna start by making some emitters. And this is gonna be our volcanic vomit. It's gonna sculpt the whole eruption. You can use as many as you like, but you're gonna wanna use at least about three to get a nice shape. So how about we start with the first one? I'm gonna create an emitter and I'll name this one Emitter 1 Direction. And I'll put that one near the tip of our volcano and I'll rotate it so it points straight up into the air. Now let's change some settings on this. Under Particle, I'm gonna go into the birth rate and change that to a hundred times higher, thousand for both. And then I'm gonna set the emission to start, well, basically whenever I want the eruption to start. So I'll set that to frame 25, and then I will set the emission to end about 10 frames later on frame 35. Might sound a bit short, but that is really all you need. So now it has a little burst of particles around those frames. I'm also gonna change the speed up to 300 and set that variation to 100%. So now they're all gonna move at slightly different speeds. Now under Metro, I'm also going to change the angle from zero to 50 degrees. So it's going to spread these particles out instead of shooting them just straight up. That's Emitter 1. Now for the second one, I will duplicate this first one, call it Emit 2 wide, because this one's going to generate a sort of spiky donut shape. Now under Emitter, I'm going to change up those angles to a much higher value, somewhere around 160, maybe even higher if you like. And then under Particle, I'm going to keep most of this the same, but under Emission, I'm going to start that about 5 frames later, and also end 5 frames later, so between frame 30 and 40. And then set the lifetime to only 8 frames, variation 100%, so it's just a quick spiky donut of particles moving outwards. And that's it for the second one. Once again, I'm going to duplicate the first emitter, name this one Emit 3 Slow. This one's going to come in a little bit later and just create sort of slowly falling debris with some smoke trails to go with it. Now under Particle, I want to change the emission to happen between frame 30 and then not stop until 60. So it goes on for a bit longer. Now the life, I'm going to set to only 100 frames, variation to 100%, so they die a bit randomly. And the speed I'm going to turn down to default 150. Now that's just going to make a slightly slower general eruption of particles. Now that is all of the emitter setup, but we do need a couple of forces. So first of all, I'm going to make a gravity force. I'm going to set that one to about one tenth of the default, about 98. And I will also create a friction force. And again, set that to a very low value, about 0.75. And now our whole shebang looks a little something like this. Just a wild vomit of particles that we're going to turn into an eruption. Now to do that, we need to create our Turbulence FD container. And once again, this one we're going to place somewhere near the tippity top of the volcano. Generally where you'd find the eruptions, basically right above where our emitters are. Now we need to scale that one under container to about 1600 by 2400 and 1600. Making it just big enough to contain the entire plume of smoke, but as small as possible to conserve that precious disk space. In here as well, I'm going to change the voxel size from 2 up to 4. And as you may know, this is the quality slash resolution of the simulation. And a lower value here means that it's going to be higher quality and slower to render, because you need more volumetric pixels, voxels, to fill the same space. And finally, I'm going to set the simulation cache to go to some nice location on my hard drive, and create a new cache named something equally nice. Then we just need to go into the simulation tab to change a single parameter, and that is setting the density to be active. And also on the viewport preview, we'll change the channel from temperature to density, because we're mostly dealing with smoke. Now let's add a turbulence tag to each and every one of our emitters. Right click, go down to turbulence and turbulence tag, the only one in there. Go down to channels on that one and set the temperature to one, density to one. 
and then do a quick test simulation of that. Boom, beautiful fireworks. In a way, volcanoes are Mother Nature's fireworks, but this is not quite what the art director had in mind. So let's do it proper. Now on this first tag, let's change the name of that to TFD1. So if we open up the timeline later, we'll know which one that is. Let's change the radius to 4, so it's the same as our voxel size. Let's go down here to force and change the velocity weight to 0.5. Now velocity weight controls how much motion your fluid inherits from its particles. And setting that to 0.5 means it inherits half. And I will set the pressure of that to 250. But I'm also going to set a keyframe of that, frame 25, control click. So when it starts emitting, the pressure is very high, but by the time it stops emitting, around frame 35, I'm going to set that all the way down to zero and set another keyframe. And under the channels, I'm going to do a similar thing. On frame 25, I will set the temperature high, also 25, and set the density even higher to 50. Keyframe both of those values and then jump ahead to frame 35, where the temperature goes down to one and the density goes down to six. Set another keyframe for both. Jump ahead again, all the way to frame 100, where the temperature is zero and the density is also zero. Once again, control click for a keyframe. Then do another quick test sim to reveal a nice sort of mushroomy tree shape. All right, let's set up the next one. Emission two, I'm gonna name this one TFD2. And under emitter, I'm going to once again change the radius up to 4. Velocity weight, I'm going to set to an entire number 1. And pressure to a solid 100. Temperature value set to 0. And density all the way up to 25. And I'm not going to keyframe any of these because these spiky donut shaped particles are very short lived. So I don't really need to. Now, with those changes made, the whole thing looks something like this much more explosive with a nice cushion of smoke around the base. Now for the final emitter, I will give that one a name as well, TFD3. And I will set the radius of that one only up to three so that are a little bit more slim and elegant. Velocity weight once again set to one, pressure zero, temperature also zero, and density one, just to make those trails a bit nicer. But to make the thing really nice, we're going to have to have a jolly good rummage around the turbulence container simulation settings. So let's just go from the bottom up. Under density, I'm going to change the dissipation half-life and crank that up all the way to 250. So the smoke just stays on screen for a lot longer. I'm also going to add one centimeter of gravity there just so the smoke gets dragged down a little bit. Now jump up one to temperature. I'm also going to change the half-life there to 20 frames. It cools a little bit quicker. Jump up another one to turbulence. Give that a four centimeter turbulence, nice and subtle. I'm going to increase the large size to 40 and change the small power to 0.4. Now the small power controls how powerful the small size is compared to the large size and the period I'm going to turn up to a hundred frames just so the turbulence evolves a little bit slower. And then a quick test sim with that done. Now our smoke seems to stay nice and thick and it's got that extra bit of detail from the turbulence. But if we really want to add detail we need to look one parameter up at the vorticity. This is the one for adding any sense of scale to your simulations. This is going to make your simulations look a lot less like a silky smooth lava lamp and more like actual smoky explosions. So if we set that to something like a value of 10 and just give it a quick simulation just to see what that looks like. And we can already see that we're getting a lot more detail, especially around all these mushroom cloudy areas that hardly got any detail with that of vorticity. It's like comparing jellyfish with gravel. But if anything, that's a bit too many detailed curls. So if we stop that sim and change the vorticity to something like 33 instead, and I know that that's technically more, but we're also going to change the intensity channel to density. So we're going to have more vorticity around the denser areas like these mushroom cloudy bits and less vorticity around the finer trails, for instance. Now under intensity mapping, we're going to change the first point here. So it's all the way down to the left. 
And the second point, so it's at one and one, all the way up to the right here. Then we'll change this bias so it's somewhere around exactly one. Should give us a nice sharp curve. So now if we do a test sim, it should look a little bit more like this. And it is really starting to take proper shape now. Finally, I'm just going to add a little bit of wind to this. Set the wind direction to be negative one on the Z axis and set the wind speed to be about 20 centimeters, just so it constantly drifts subtly from the left to the right, because in the real world, there's always going to be wind. Okay, so I've saved this bit for last because it makes the whole simulation slow. And that is the volcano interaction. Because right now, the smoke just sort of drifts freely through the volcano, and I don't think that would happen in real life. I think volcanoes are made of rocks and stuff. So, let's add a turbulence FD tag to the volcano object, and simply go in and check the collision object on that one. And then we can do a tragically slow test sim. And even from frame zero, it is tragically, tragically slow. But as with everything, there is a trick to speed that up. If you go into the Turbulence FD container under Simulation, Solver and Miscellaneous, you can uncheck Collision Objects and Large Container. So if you have a look at this green box here, that is the Adaptive Container. So if we stop the current test sim and start another one, keep an eye on that box now that it's blasting through these frames and you'll see that it stays only around the area where there's actual fluids happening. And now if we let this test simulation run, I'm sure you're going to see something not very nice fairly soon. Yep, right down here to the left in this sort of porridgey area, you can see that the volcano is exploding, but not in the good way. That is simply collisions, vorticity, pressure, velocity all happening at once and the sim just sort of not knowing what to do with it all and freaking out, exploding everywhere, ruining your entire sim and most likely your entire day. Not great. The only way to really fix this is, again, under the solver settings and increasing the frame substep limit. This will slow your simulation down, it will make you sad, but it is the only way. If you're seen as intricate collision and fast moving fluids, you may need to increase that well beyond two as well. But that seems to have taken care of that little unwanted explosion for us. Now let's add a final subtle detail to this volcano. Now if you just go in and select a few polygons near the tippity top of the volcano, just like that, make sure you keep the edges a little bit rough and then go in and store that selection. And then you drag that freshly stored selection into restrict to polygon selection area on your turbulence tag. Then you can animate the density from zero on say frame 25. Jump ahead a few frames to when you feel that the explosion is the most explosion-y. Set density to one on that frame and then animate it back down to zero over the next few frames. Let's do another sim of that. And that should make it look like the eruption is causing a shockwave that's kicking up a load of dust that's sitting around the crater. A very nice little detail that's just going to make the whole eruption sit a lot nicer around the crater. And with that, our simulation days are done and it's time to go shading. So let's pop into the container and check lock cache because we're quite happy with the one we've got. And then we go find a frame, frame 150, looks like it's got loads going on. And let's render that one to see what's actually going on. It looks like we've got ourselves a vague puff of red. And that's not what we want. That puff of red is actually fire. So let's go into the TFT container under rendering, go all the way down to the fire shader and set that to don't. And then we pop back up to the smoke shader and set that one to use density. And then do a <clears throat> quick render to see what that looks like. And it looks not very quick at all, but pretty good. So before we go any further, let's go into the mapping of this. And you know this trick from the cloud tutorial. We just clip that ever so slightly and then do another test render. And suddenly our 30 second render becomes an eight second render. Not bad. Here's the difference. Absolutely identical. Right, moving on. Smoke color, I'm going to set that to be slightly darker. I'll set the hue to 25, saturation also 25, lightness about 
45. Just makes it a little bit darker. Then under illumination, I will turn on multiple scattering and set the max depth to 2. That's basically global illumination, but for smoke. So the light bounces around at least twice before it dies out. And that has once again slowed down our render. And we don't want that. We don't want renders to be slow. We want them to be fast. That's 22 seconds. But if we just change the illumination resolution down to 50%, it's going to do it a little bit dirtier, but a lot quicker. And it's going to look basically the same. See, now we're down to six seconds. And that's more like it. And actually, boom. That is it for the standard renderer. So let's switch all of this over to Redshift and do a version in that. The first stop is the Materials panel, where we will create a Redshift Material Volume Material and slap that onto our turbulence container. Now, nothing's gonna show up yet because we need to go into the shading network here. And under basic on the redshift volume, we need to set the scatter channel to use the turbulence FT density channel. And then we can do a quick test of that and we'll be getting all kinds of smoke. Now within the scatter, I'm going to change the tint to use the same color I did in the standard one, 25, 25, 45. And under absorption, I'm just going to eye drop that same color. So wherever there's a little bit of transparency, we're going to get a little bit of warmth where the light shines through. Now, if we want fire, which we don't, you go down to emission, set the channel to use turbulence FD temperature and set the emission type to black body. If we go to frame where there's bound to be a lot of heat happening, like frame 80, we're going to get something looking like this, basically a rather nice looking explosion. But as I've said, we don't want fire. So I'm going to delete that temperature from the emission channel because we're going to keep this dusty, smoky, dusty and smoky. Let's jump back to frame 150 and do the last thing, which is under advanced, where we will set the shadow density scale to 0.5. And that's just going to make the shadows less dense. And once again, boom, that is our Redshift version ready for ready for render. Shading this with Arnold, you do basically the same things. You create an Arnold volume material, make sure that density is set to the density channel, and get rid of both your emission and black body channels and set the colors to be the colors. You can download all three of these source files on my Patreon. And if you want to explode through 3D projects professionally, you need to join the Process of Motion course. It'll teach you everything about running a motion design project from brief to delivery with the force of a red hot pyroclastic flow. Praise be to all my patrons and an extra merry solstice to the immortals. And to you all, a very jolly stay in motion.